Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're going to do is learn how to use the perfect brush in a more user-friendly way. If you're not familiar with the perfect brush, this is one of the masking tools that On One has available for us to use so that way we can apply our adjustments wherever we expect them to go. I will be very fair in saying that the perfect brush is not a perfect tool, but it does get us a lot of really, really good stuff. So let me show you how the perfect brush uh, can be enhanced. Now, if I wanted to select this hat, I could use a color range mask, but let's just say that I'm not gonna use a color range mask and I want to actually use the perfect brush uh, because I want to paint in exactly where I want this to be. So if I were to slide over this right now, you can see that my effect is happening both on the brim of her hat, which is up here as well, or whatever this ribbon is of her hat. Um, and then it's also coming down onto the rim and spilling over into her face. I don't think that's what I want, and I'm sure that's what many of you may not want. So let's go ahead and reset this. And if you want to activate the perfect brush, you can come up here to the top bar and click on the perfect brush icon, which is just this brush with the little stars on it. And with this selected, what you'll be able to do is paint right wherever you want to. Now, if you hit Command R, you can get access to the perfect brush. Uh, using a keyboard shortcut, or you can just click here. Once you're inside of either the local or the masking tools, it doesn't matter which one you're in. The perfect brush works the exact same way. Before we get going, let me explain kind of what happens with the perfect brush. The center of the brush here, that little crosshair, and I'll zoom in here on the screen so you can see that, uh, the little crosshair is where a color sample is being taken from and as big as the inner ring so the ring that uh, controls where your effect is happening at 100 percent that's where this particular painting kind of stops at right so if i click once you can see it is 100 percent happening inside of that ring and then as we get closer to the outer ring it starts to fade away if i hit the letter o you can kind of see uh, that in action, right? So if uh, this is about where it was, where I clicked going all the way out to the outer edge of the ring, you can see that it starts to fade away, but it's selecting and sampling based off of the color. Now, if I hit the letter O again, you can see that it stopped here where the darker color is. Uh, and then here where another darker color is. Now it did jump into the headband here or ribbon. And like I said, the perfect brush is not perfect, but uh, you can very quickly just paint across here. And I'm not using too much, uh, I guess, I'm not being very careful. I'm just painting across this as wildly as I would like to. And I've selected a large portion of this uh, brim of the hat without ever having to click uh, multiple times. That was all just one click and I wasn't being very precise, but it came right up to the edge of this brim here. Now, there's a few controls that you can use to make the perfect brush a little bit better. So let me just go ahead and hit reset. Uh, if you hit the gear icon, you get this menu over here. Now, because I'm in full screen, it's popping up on the left for me. Uh, but when you are using this, it should pop up right underneath the gear icon. But there's two options that we have available, right? Uh, we have the color threshold and we have transition. Now, the color threshold is how much of the color is being sampled to select on the image. So how much of the color under the little crosshair is being selected as the range, if you will, similar to what our color range mask allows us to do, which is hone in how much of that range uh, of the color that we're selecting. Okay. So this is all mostly blue. 
which is why I left it completely uh, down to zero for this one. If I were to go back over here and turn this all the way up to about 75, when I paint, you see that it's going more into that ribbon. And that's because it's identifying that, hey, there's some blue colors that are happening out there. All right. Now, as I get closer, you can see it's going to select more of those blue colors because uh, I'm closer to that sample set. Now, if I come down here next to the skin, uh, you can see it's actually painting over onto the skin. And the reason for that is there's a blue cast from the hat that was happening on her skin. And you can just barely see it. But because I'm including more of those ranges or that color sample of blue, it's going to say, hey, you're like me. I'm going to paint you. And that's what's happening here. OK, now, if I don't want it to paint over into her face as easily, then what I want to do is pull this color sample down until it's at zero. And so now when I paint, you can see it's not painting anything more than what is underneath that crosshair at the time that I paint over it. All right. That's very important for you to know when you're starting to use this uh, sample or this perfect brush and you're creating masks with it. Now, the second slider that we have available is the transition slider. So the transition slider controls the feather of the perfect brush as it gets closer to the edge, right? Uh, and this is based on the color inside of that sample range. Now, if you want to create a soft edge, then you'll increase this. And if you want to create a harder edge, then decrease this amount. So essentially, this is the edge of the brush. Now, if I turn the feather all the way down to zero and I paint, you can see I have a fairly harsh edge, right? If I go back into my gear icon, you can see I have my transition set to zero. Now, if I pull my transition up to, let's say, 61%, we'll reset the mask. And when I paint, you're going to see that the transition fades off a lot better. And this is what it looks like when you paint with a 0% brush opacity, but with the perfect brush tools at 61%, I'm sorry, at a 0% feather on the brush with a 61% transition of the perfect brush effect. That sounds very confusing, uh, but essentially all this is doing is fading off the effect. Now, if I were to increase the feather here, then this would work just like a normal uh, brush does with the feathering of the actual brush area, okay? So if I reset this one more time, feathering of the actual brush area, you can see it's still selecting a lot better. Um, in my opinion, this goes on a lot more smooth and you can paint even more recklessly than I did the first time. Uh, however, if I were to pull this down, I think manageable ranges are anywhere between 10 and zero uh, with the color threshold not really exceeding more than six. Uh, I usually keep it around four and that's because most of the time when I paint, like if I want to paint on the face, you can see it's selecting the, the color range of the face quite well. Now, if I wanted to add in the lips, then I can pull up on this color threshold. And if I get closer to those lips, which it's kind of hard to show that red is being painted on red. Uh, but when I hit the letter O, you can see the opacity as I paint all around here. It's selecting just the face and I'm getting a better mask selection. Now, that is probably not the way that you would want to use it. So let's look at a practical use case. I'm going to zoom out of the image here and what we'll do is I want to modify the lighting of this particular hat. So instead of using a paint with color, 
I am going to use my exposure settings down here. With the perfect brush and the feather, I usually leave the feather about 50%. This is just a uh, personal preference with the brush whenever I'm using the perfect brush. You can make this 100%. You can make it whatever size uh, that you feel comfortable with. But what I like to do is look at that inner ring and make it just a little bit smaller than the area that I want to cover because I don't want too much spillage, right? Uh, and I'll go back and refine my edges a little bit later. So all I'm going to do is paint over this area and it's not showing anything right now because I don't have an effect applied. So I'm just going to bring down the opacity or the exposure, which, oh, so I have a blend mode applied. Let me take that off and go back to normal. So as you can see, now I'm actually starting to get somewhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do is come across here until I get a good selection. And it's okay if it's not perfect initially, uh, because sometimes masking an on one, which, you know, is, is really good for the capability that's available. Um, sometimes you just got to make a couple passes like I'm doing right here. Uh, but I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into getting this selection and I'm going to be able to make my adjustment uh, the way that I want it to be here in a second. Now, what I need to do is make my uh, inner circle a little bit smaller or make my brush a little bit smaller and then come down here onto the brim of the hat or the rim and just kind of paint over that. Uh, and as I paint over this you see that it, it's selecting just those areas it's not selecting anything that's outside of it and maybe it is a little bit but again this is me not working very hard to make this selection now i just painted right over that ribbon and i didn't mean to do that so we're just going to come undo that and start repainting again so as i go across here and We'll call this good, right? Uh, what I always recommend you do whenever you make a selection is you come back to your mask and you feather it just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of feather, but you see how that makes it look just a little bit better. It, it, it blends it, in my opinion, way better than uh, you'll ever get. Now, I can obviously zoom in and really tighten up this uh, this edge here with a smaller brush. I can say, no, I want you to, if I can stay off the ribbon, I want you to paint just over this area. And you can see that On One is doing a pretty good job at just cleaning up that blue outline that's happening across the hat there. Now, again, practical use scenario I would never uh, change the exposure of the brim of the hat this much that it starts to look like a different color so we can pull that right on back up and we'll just pull it down a little bit and you can start to see if I had turn this off and on that I'm getting better control over the hat now if for whatever reason exposure isn't the right one I have the access to modify the highlights and just pull those down. And that's a much more subtle approach to the edit that's happening on this particular image. So perfect brush in a nutshell, that's how you can use it to benefit your photography. Uh, if you got questions about it, drop it in the comment section below. If you want to see more content centered about on one, consider subscribing and checking out the videos that are showing up on the screen now. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.